This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. The time being 4.45 p.m. I'd like to call the July 23rd, 2020 meeting of the Tilton Select Board to order. Before we get started, if you're participating by phone or the GoToMeeting platform, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. As chair of the Tilton Select Board, due to the COVID-19 slash coronavirus crisis and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Please note that the select board are meeting at town hall and providing access via go to meeting and conference call to enable the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. In accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that <coughs> A, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically may call the following conference call number at 1-866-899-4679. The access code is 817-026-717, followed by the pound sign. Uh, when prompted, please press the pound sign again. B. Additional public access by video or other electronic means will be available as follows. We are using the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. The public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone, tablet, or computer at global.gotomeet.me forward slash town of Tilton forward slash selectmen. Additionally, there is an opportunity for the public to attend the meeting in person. However, in order to maintain social distancing, only eight spaces are available. Should you wish to attend in person, please call 380-2523 and someone will meet you at the front door of the building to let you enter. Be advised that you must be wearing a mask and if you do not have one, one will be provided for you. Attendance is on a first come, first serve basis. And once the maximum limit has been reached, anyone wishing to participate in the meeting must do so remotely via the means explained above. The information can also be found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedule and agendas, board of selectmen. C. We are providing public notice of information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting via telephone, conference, and go to meeting. And instructions are provided on the town website at tiltonnh.org and at the town kiosk. D, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during any meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public and have questions, please write your questions down. And at the end of each agenda item, I will ask if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next item. Please state your name and address and then ask your question. E. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. F, we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting and we will reschedule for another time. Please note, all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. Constantino here. Five present. Jessamine here. Pirate here. Scanlon present. Okay. Um, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you please join me? 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all. Ah, thank you all very much. Uh, the first order of business is to review the July 16th Selectman's Minutes. Uh, is there any discussion on the minutes? John. Yes, on the bottom of page five, other business. Uh, Selectman Justin talked briefly. Um, there's votes, which actually we refer to it as oversized signs. But we've replaced that word with size. All right. Is that it, John? Okay, Pat. That was one of the um, issues that I had as well. Um, the other one that I had was under Selectman Constantino. Um, that reported she had met with Chief Cormier, Deputy Fire Chief Chabert, and our prosecutor just to discuss rewriting the fireworks ordinance. Meant prohibit fireworks in the village district. And I believe I brought the idea of that to the board and asked the board's permission to go ahead and do, go forward with Jesse um, in doing that. And the way it's worded here, it looks like I'm just gonna go on ahead myself as a selectman in doing this with the two of them. So just like it to be worded in such a way that because I did ask, I came forward to ask the board uh, permission to go ahead and do that, what they thought their ideas were on that. You did. Have you any others? No. I have one. Uh, I have one. Um, and I don't have the page number, but it's under Selectman Pyra's uh, report. He made a statement that he had heard comments that the town of Tilton was uh, anti-business. I don't know if that's an actual direct quote, what it says in the minutes, but that's the gist of it, followed by Selectman Jessamine refuted the comment. Well, uh, ref the word refute means to prove false. And I did nothing <laughs> to prove the comment false. Uh, I disagree with the comment. I stated I disagreed with the comment, but the comment stands. Is there anybody else? Jeannie. So, but I, the word uh, disagreed with That the would work great for me because I did disagree with the comment, uh, but by definition, I didn't refute it, I don't okay. think. And then one other item on page five at the top, the discussion about Chick-fil-A food vendor. I just want to point out that Joe uh, did say the selectmen voted to let the vendor uh, go forward the next day. And Joe stated with the understanding that they would complete the paperwork mm -hmm. and turn it in. So that was missing. I brought that to um, Gail's attention when she had sent out the minutes on it. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Anyone else? And then I just have, if I could have one of the comments. Absolutely. So it's really hard. Gail's having a really hard time transcribing, hearing from everyone. She said, I was very mumbled last week. Joe was very mumbled. Really? And what she said, now I think this distance is the right distance uh, without the mask on. I was speaking very close and it's all garbled. So just so three, four inches? Yes. Take okay. your mask off. That would be helpful for her to hear. Okay. Well, um, hearing nothing, no other correction, I make a motion to accept the minutes of July 16th as corrected, as amended. I have a, second. We have a motion in a second. Are there any other? Comments? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Jessamine, yes. Fire, yes. Scanlon, yes. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our land use coordinator, Leanne Moynihan, is here to give an update on land use activities as well as to discuss the Tilton Sign Ordinance. The floor is yours. Well, take my mask off, so thank you. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi. back. First time I've been back since COVID, I think. So, thank you for having me. I think I will start, if it's okay with the board, with the sign before I get into my report, because if there's not enough time, I can just I have the report um, typed and I can just hand it to you the updates from my department. So I think that works that for way. us. Say. Eh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so my understanding is you, you the selectman, did receive a copy of the letter that we sent, and this is why I'm here. Is that correct? Okay. So I can um, go through as much as you want me to go through. I mean, I have the letter again. I can explain the ordinance itself. I don't know if you want to just start with questions. I can do a presentation on our ordinance and how it relates to this particular sign that I sent that letter. Uh, I'll, I'll take my thing from you. There's a lot of different directions I can go with this, but- um, Well, I, I think I'd like to start with questions. Okay, that's fine. Then we can do that later. <laughs> that Maybe that'll get us Sure. Uh, okay. And I would like to start with Selectman Scanlon. Okay. Well, actually my question is more towards the Selectman on July 4th, we had a brief uh, notifying each other of a problem with the sign being oversized and lots of problems. Uh, and we ended that real quickly and it was decided that we would meet and discuss this. That was 19 days ago. And I wanted to bring it up at last meeting, but uh, we could wait another week. It was my understanding that we would have the opportunity to discuss our concerns before we went as far as filing cease and desist orders and things like that. These were some legitimate statements that all of us had uh, concern about. However, we've already filed the cease and desist order, and we did not have that discussion prior to the consensus on our day, which we decided to do. So that that has great concern for me because given the history of our signing words, I think Cap was here when it was uh, drafted up. I think it's like in Dawson was our we were concerned that there was a case Reed versus I Gilbert. Gilbert. And the signing on political signs and political statements and what was a statement. It, it wasn't about political signs, the Gilbert. And, the, and there was uh, some discussion on that. When we discussed it, we also made contact with an attorney to review our sign orders. And we suggested that we did not include anything that covered political signs because the state covered that. And it was a very, very touchy area as to what was there. So we did not include political signs when we wrote our ordinance. Now, when I look at the definition of signs, I think it's two, three. I have copies if you want copies of the sign. I have just a little organizationally yeah. challenged tonight. <laughs> I think word fell off the seat. And on for its own board. Maybe you can read the signage definition. Yeah. Yes. Start with the sign definition here. So to signage. Okay. And temporary signs. It's for temporary yeah. signs. So, in our um, cease and desist order, we're referring to things as signage. And if we look at 231, signing, be standing name plates or signs intended to promote or advertise a business or commodity 
offered on the property where posted shall not ex exceed the specifications established in for the properties on district. Signage shall also include banners, merchandise, and signs. Now, this is the part that's vague um, and leaves a lot of interpretations because clearly it does not promote or advertise business or commodity that's offered on the property where posted. Um, so I think when we, this is what is one of the concerns when we first drafted this ordinance was do we put political signs? But we didn't. We didn't do that. We have political signs all over town, which technically, if you went through this ordinance, you could say that those are illegal to all of them, every single one. So the biggest problem is if we go to war. And we represent us. Every court case that goes before a judge, that's an attorney that wins, attorney that loses. When you start talking about First Amendment, which are protected, um, and those Supreme Court rulings on it, you're talking about legal actions that run. <coughs> $500,000 easy. I don't think that this should have just gone forward and this season to assist on out prior to us discussing some of it to make sure that we were covered and that we didn't open ourselves up to a lawsuit that could run half a million dollars a sign that's going to be there for if it's 95 days, the state law. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, I hope everybody takes it apart because sometimes it costs more to um, do it. And the actual person that chooses are juries and judges. If one attorney loses, the other one pays dearly. So. Leanne? Okay, so I'll start by um, responding to why um, we initiated action on this. Um, this was brought to my attention. Uh, we didn't see the sign first and take action. It was brought to my department's attention as the land use and um, code enforcement, which has to enforce your ordinances, um, by a member of the select board. Um, it was then uh, the action that we first took was to notify DOT because we believed it was in the right of way and it was a safety issue. So that was first addressed. Um, so as we um, started to <coughs> look into this matter, um, we did go um, cautiously because I they were political signs. Uh, we consulted um, three attorneys on this matter who all agreed on the legality of this. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of corrections on John's statement um, as far as the court case between uh, Reed and Gilbert was regarding um, religious rights to um, display a sign. It wasn't political, um, but it did rule that all signage, regardless of the message, are the same and you can't treat signage differently because of what is written on it, whether it's political or religious or whatever, a sign is a sign is a sign is what that court determined. Um, so that's what that case upheld. So legally, we were told as well, you can't put an ordinance um, in your town ordinance that would say, for example, political signs are allowed to be 60 square feet and all other signs are allowed to be 40, because that would be discriminatory based on what is written on a sign. So um, just so you understand, that's that's not a way to go. I have some more documentation on that and the legal cases, if anyone wants any of the um, legal findings that I have and the advice that I have said for research on this. And more was the attorneys were advising on um, not really telling us how to go, but more trying to explain what the court cases said and what are we would 
standing was as far as what we had to enforce. So, so that being said, that we can't discriminate on signs. This sign was uh, obviously very large. A lot of people were offended, but we didn't take the avenue of what is written on it because you can't discern what is written. Um, and uh, John is right that the way our ordinance is written, all signs that are temporary uh, do require a permit. Um, we, however, according to our attorney, um, John Radigan's position on that was we can take it on a case by case basis. A comparison is, you know, someone is driving down the highway going 100 miles an hour and there's 10 people going 70 miles an hour, the speed limit 65. You stop the 100 mile an hour driver. And when they say, what about all those 10 going 70? It's like we're dealing with one case at a time. So um, does it mean you go out and you know, right, cease and desist on every sign. But if something is um, grossly out of ordinance, then you take action. So that's what we did. The, the, the letter went out to notify them that they do need a permit per our ordinance for a temporary sign. Also, just one more correction. Um, it isn't 95 days allowed by the state. There's a new state law that there's no limitation on how long a will sign can be up for the state. Um, when that's a change in the law for the political signs. There's used to be you have to take it down if you lost the race within so many days. Now you don't have to take your signs down. Um, that was another case. So uh, if anyone wants any of the legal backup or the actual sign ordinance, which is interesting, is can use some um, some changes, which we will take this as a opportunity to make some changes in our actual permit. Um, and we are going to look at our ordinance. And you know, one way to go on this is to make no requirement for permits for temporary signs as long as they're within 90 days, no more than 90 days, no greater than 40 square feet. But you have to make it for everyone if you make that. And that's something we're going to look at when we look at our amendments on looking at the sign ordinance and particularly the temporary signs. So um, that kind of explains um, why we did this. Um, second, uh, we need to keep separate the letter and the requirement for them to uh, get a permit and how far we're going to go with it. So I know there's some concern whether this gets um, to court. This doesn't mean we're going to court. You know, we can decide to, we sent a letter and said you need a permit. This is, you know, larger than, it's obviously larger than our ordinance allows um, and leave it at that. Or we can, we can continue to enforce it and we can enforce other signs if that's the way the board wants to go. But all I have is the ordinance to go by. When something comes to my attention, I use that. Look at the ordinance. It doesn't conform to the ordinance, and it's great. I can self attorney, and that's why we did this. So um, just to understand the, the direction we went, I do have the permit here. I have the legal backup, um, which I made copies for you. If anyone is interested, or if not, that's fine. Um, and you know, you have the ordinance. And I also have the, the state ordinance, if anyone's interested in the state ordinance and what that says. Thank you. Peter? Just, could you address uh, 231? In our ordinance. So that's regular signage. That's not temporary signage. You understand that, right? That's freestanding main plates intended to promote or advertise. That's regular signage. All portable and temporary signage, which I believe this sign falls into, displayed in excess of that which is specifically allowed in this ordinance will require a special permit be issued by the land use office. Special permit will be issued for not more than one 90 day period per year with fees set by the Board of Selectmen. And I have those fees here to show you. Failure to obtain a permit will constitute a violation of the zoning board in section 11 for all portable and temporary signs must comply with 2.3.2, which means they can't be on a roof. So I think that's really what you have to reference with the sign. It's not a it's not a business sign on a business. Uh, it's not a permanent sign, right? We all agree that political signs are not permanent signs. The other thing is, uh, we have other signs in town of that size. Of that size? Of the size of this one? Okay, what? I'm not aware of them, but what? 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 I, I would have to go. And, we have bullet, we have billboards. We have I don't know. Like, sign American Woodwork. That's 
looking for us in the long term. I'm saying that. Well, I mean, I'm not aware of this. What veterans? Bath House. Bath House. I mean, if I was aware of it, I mean, no one brought that to my attention. I don't go out and patrol for signs. I don't know where that is. I don't think I've seen it. Right, right off the valve line, the house that they raised. That's, that's actually that's a sign on the side of a trailer. I don't believe that qualifies as a sign. It is a sign on the side of a trailer. And I've oftentimes wondered how that fits into our, our uh, uh, ordinance. Coca-Cola drives trucks through town to say Coca-Cola on the side. I think that, yeah, it falls under artists' uh, freedom of, I don't know. But again, we, we can go down that road. And I don't know that, and I'm certainly not here um, trying to um, convince the board to have us go out and start policing and picking up every sign out there. Uh, first of all, we don't have the manpower to be policing every every little sign and uh, out there. But again, I think what, what triggered this was that it was a safety issue and originally it was in the right of way, um, which was a traffic issue and they did pull it back and I did take new pictures and I am aware of that. And uh, so as far as I'm concerned, if this board doesn't want us to pursue this anymore, now that it's not a safety issue, then we don't have to. But they have been put on notice that they do need a permit and they can not file a permit or they can, you know, we, we can go whatever direction this board wants as far as that goes. Okay, thank you. Peter? Yeah, being the loan to center back at the early part of the month, I am still of the opinion election signs are covered under the RSA. The town of Tilton has never gone after anyone with election signs unless they were up too long after the election. So it's interesting now that we've decided to do that. Um, and like uh, the what John's talking about, that trail is not moving around. It's parked like a billboard. It has a sign on it. So I guess we tell this guy, get a trailer and put your sign on it and he's good to go. I don't know. I say the election ones are exempt, like we've always treated them. Eric? Um, following the rules. The, um, this, my only concern of the sign was you, if you follow state requirements, it should say, Signs are supposed to say who's paying for that political advertisement on the sign, and that sign is not. And my other concern was the safety hazard. Um, I've driven by that sign now that it's been moved. I drove by it five or six times while it was there, uh, you know, where it was in its first original position. And I was concerned about safety. Now, when you're heading towards the town of Belmont from Tilton, you really don't see that sign until you're right on top of it because it's been moved back and the trees block the view. Right. Coming back the other way from Belmont towards the town of Tilton, yet I, I almost had to remind myself to look for the sign because it was not obvious to my peripheral vision. So my concerns are alleviated. Um, my safety concerns and safety was first. And the only other thing I would say is the state ordinance says that you have to have who sponsors that sign on it, who's paid for that, that, you know, like when you see a commercial on TV, this, you know, I'm, you know, Joe Smith and I approve this message and this was paid for by friends of Joe Smith. That's one of the things other than that, I don't have. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I won't argue that with you. I know that that has to be on, advertisements and I read it earlier I think one of the I don't print that part does say that you have to do that I'm not sure it has to be on signs I didn't see it on the sign part of this but either way I I know it's yep. the political sign ordinance from the state which is um uh colon 17. <laughs> that was almost yeah. a tragedy uh, good catch yeah, uh, colon 17 is actually the one regarding signs. So again, I, I am I have no problem not pursuing this uh, any further than we have, uh, but I do think we should address the sign ordinance later and try and make some clarification on that because it is because of that court case, it is an issue with um, political signs it's, uh... and, and fees. Uh, political advertising. Uh, What's the state on there? 664 colon 14. Signature identification and lack of authorization. And this is on the state website. Okay. 
and it, yep. I can send you the link. Yeah, no, that's okay. But it's actually the beginning. I didn't print the whole thing. Six, okay. I printed six, six, four, like 15. Yeah, okay. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's my only concern. I have, one, I have one more thing I want to give you. Uh, and I know the cords there this time. So this is some recommendations. Put marks. Yeah, I remember now. Because I almost stop. Um, so I get to the mic. Yeah. Peter? Leanne, didn't you say that they've amended the time you can leave the signs up forever because the 664-17 I've got is no later than the second Friday following the election? Yeah, I, I got it from the Secretary of State's office. When I called them, they said it recently changed. It may not be printed on there, but that's what they told me when I called the gardener's office. office. I, I wasn't aware of that. They said it was a brand new change. So I, is that the only change in 664? Um, wow. Um, so this is uh, some do's and don'ts on if you're going to write an ordinance um, relative to the Reed and Gilbert case, which you might want to take a look at if anyone's interested in the New Hampshire Municipal Association um, on uh, writing a signing ordinance. Have that information. Pat, do you have uh, questions for the? No, I, I yes, we think that. Uh, we move forward and it's not. I think we move forward with what um, the information that Leanne had. I think they moved forward in a just way. I had uh, multiple occasions to ride that road and drive that road. And I came upon two or three times when uh, the owner of the property actually was moving the sign over. So it was, we were stopped in traffic while he was moving it above the yellow line on in, in Route 3, and we just sat there and the traffic was stopped. That was, that's a safety issue. So I'm really concerned about that, and I don't care what the sign says, it doesn't matter if it says buy cupcakes, it doesn't matter. It's the, it's the safety aspect of it. And then he backed up, and then he drove forward again. So that really is a safety issue for me. So I have to say. Okay. Good job. Uh, who wrote the letter that was sent? Attorney Radigan. Attorney Radigan. Okay. Uh, I don't care what the sign says either. My concerns were sort of like Pat. It was hanging out. It had it tipped over or whatever. It would have been in the road. Um, uh, I see section 2.3.4, all portable or temporary signage, uh, just says that they need a permit. They need a special permit. Have they applied for the special permit? No, they have not. What we have in the letter, we gave them, yeah, they just got the letter. We just mailed it. Yeah, no one missed the 27th. Once they apply for it, how many, and then it's good for 90 days? It's good for 90 days. However, oh, I'm sorry, how? All portable signs. Oh. Um, that means every election sign, my five for selectmen, a portable one. It means correct. every one I put out, I need a permit for. That's correct. Um, for your no. ordinance. For your ordinance. Yes. Good to know. It, no, it doesn't. It, you never reference election signs in here. Signs. That's true. It's, Genie? Not election signs, it's signs. Genie? It's not you define signs Genie? in your ordinance. Genie, please. So, so Peter, if I can, I, um, just I think just to um, clarify on signs, it doesn't say election signs, but we have to default to our definition of a sign 
And our def definition of a sign is a board, a poster, placard displayed in public view to advertise or to convey information. So I mean, a sign is a sign, and certainly is a sign. I guess we could call it a banner, um, but we don't know what it is because they haven't applied. And we don't know the size. So, um, and we have no intention of, you know, patrolling town and, and checking for every sign that's outside of that ordinance. Don't worry if Pandora's box is open, I'll let you know. This is ridiculous. The town has always let the election signs go. Now all of a sudden we're against them. Okay. Just be consistent. I'm against this. Okay. Uh, John, do you want to pursue this any further? Um, I, I think, um, I don't feel that we should pursue it any further, except for, as Sam was stating, that it should not be in such a way that could be dangerous. I did see one piece of the sign at a bar across the bottom that come free and was dangling down. That sign could roll and come loose. So it's a, a hazard thing. If it's in such a manner, get back as required. Uh, I feel that at this time it's not worth the uh, something that we have to figure out our signage. This is not just us. This is every single town and state in this country is going through this. I and we went through this and I don't think it's worthwhile to pursue other than the fact of asking them to keep it in a safe manner. Okay, Peter, you don't want to, what, you want to pursue this any further? I didn't from the get-go. That's a no, okay. Eric? I'm good. What does that mean? You want to pursue this any further? No, I'll let, only if it becomes a safety issue. Pat? I think that there's an ordinance on, on the books that we should go and adhere to the ordinance. The ordinance is there for a reason. If there's a reason for us to change the ordinance, then we should pursue doing that, one or the other, because you can't change the ordinance as it appears every time there's an exception to something. Uh, that's why we hire people in land use to adhere to the land use and zoning ordinances. That's exactly what they're doing. So I'm all for adhering to the ordinances. So that's a yes. Yes. Uh, I'd like to see him get the uh, permit that's talked about in the ordinance. But other than that, I have no wish to open that box of, uh, like Peter says, uh, we're going to go around and measure signs. And <laughs> as long as it's not a safety issue, I'm OK. So that's I'm a no as well. So it's uh, four no's. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess we have about five minutes, and I will do my a quick uh, overview of the department um, since we haven't met in a while. Uh, so just in general, uh, during COVID, the land use department did continue to operate full meetings. We had planning and zoning meetings um, through GoToMeeting, thanks to uh, the technology provided by um, Tim. That all went very well. Uh, we actually were able um, during uh, COVID to approve um, two projects, even though we were remote, we um, approved the Honda um, project, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And we approved a solar array project by, uh, that was being prepped by White Rock. So, um, so that, was, that was good. Another opportunity that we had over um, while COVID was happening, or uh, in process is we have the opportunity to finish up uh, organizing the second board. And again, I want to thank the board for my office, which is finally finished since COVID, um, which is really nice to have some little bit of privacy um, for myself and my staff. 
Um, also, we moved all the, as you can see, all the file cabinets have been moved up, and that makes it a lot easier for us to, we don't have to run downstairs, especially now during COVID, um, to get files. So thank God those were all moved up here before COVID. So and we've cleaned up a lot of files in doing that. It was a big effort. Uh, I want to kind of thank Janice, who came on board in February, who's the land use technician. She came in here um, every day on a regular schedule during COVID. I did work from home, uh, and uh, it, it all went really well. We came in and, and then finally got this organized. So I appreciate that. Um, as far as um, what else has been happening in the department, the planning board, um, just to make some comparisons, and a lot of these comparisons, I assume, are as a result of COVID. But um, for the same period, January to July in 2019, we had eight planning board cases come before the board. Um, January to July 2020, we've had two. Those are the two I mentioned, the White Rock and Honda. We have no pending applications right now in the planning board. And as far as the status of Honda, Honda is waiting for their approval from the Hilton Northfield Water District, which I think is um, becoming a little cumbersome for them. But hopefully by the end of the month, they're going to be heard and be ready to um, break ground there, hopefully by August or September. So I think that'll be a good project. Um, zoning, uh, zoning hasn't been as, as, uh, as different. Zoning, we had four cases January to July in 2019, and we've had three cases um, in January, July 2020. And we have no pending zoning board cases right now. As far as the building department, the building department continued to do inspections and received permits during COVID. Um, however, obviously, uh, the numbers were down. And just to give you an idea of that, uh, permits in 2019 for the year, 217 permits for $56,300 in, um, in fees. That was for the entire year of 2019. Uh, to date, we have done 93 permits for $15,627. So that's down quite a bit. Um, however, uh, last year for the same period, we only did 100 permits. So it's 100 versus 93 for the same period, $35,000 last year though, um, in fees. So um, the upside of that is I do predict that we will get another $35,000 hopefully by the end of the year in permits, mainly due to Honda. And if that Honda permit comes in, it's going to be upwards of dollars So that should get us back on track last year. Our assessing, since we are the clerks for the assessing department, we have temporarily taken over doing sales inputting, and that was taken over by Janice because they've been um, out pretty much for the summer. So we've taken over some of that um, work, um, and that's been going well. It's a good learning, learning experience for Janice in, in handling the, um, the assessing data. And that's pretty much what, um, the main topics. The other things that we've done in the department over the past few months. Um, I mentioned reorganizing the upstairs. That is complete. Um, we also have completed our GIS mapping installation. So I know that we did receive a presentation of that back when we were looking to budget for that. Um, Tim, Tim was uh, 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 the one that really um, spearheaded this and um, did all the technology and working with um, uh, CAI, who was known as Prior Graphics, to get that up. And if you have an opportunity, uh, it's worth looking at. It really is nice. We have the maps now online with an overlay of all the lots. So you can search a lot. It gives you a satellite view of it. And it has the uh, assessment card right there attached. When you click on the parcel, you can see all the information on the parcel. We have an overlay of the zoning right on there. You can see what zone it's in. Um, and there's a there's a few different uh, maps you can look at. You can look at Google or Esri. There's a few different options on your satellite mapping. You're going to be able to do a butters list that way. Um, it's We've actually used it um, quite a bit. Just We just put it up the other day and I've already used it a number of times already with the project. So uh, it is on the website under parcel information um, if you want to take a look at it. You do, so you're a butters list. Are you able to pull from San Bernton? Belmont, Northfield, or Franklin when the abutters are on the town line? Uh, no, I don't believe it will pull the abutters list because we don't have the assessment cards loaded to give us their ownership. So any of those would then have to do something. You have to do manually, you're correct. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I want to, yeah, thanks to Tim for that. And um, and actually, Cardiographic is coming in 
uh, tomorrow to do a presentation because we're going to talk to Johanna and Peter, my producer in this group. I would like to see um, a few more overlays. We can keep adding, the nice thing is I want this kind of base now. We'd like to add overlays to this and maybe we can get the sewer um, maps to get overlaid on that, even if sewer doesn't want to transfer over to cardiographics or CAI, we can at least do put the overlay so it's available to the public and do a manual update with our updates, but possibly they're going to show what they can do and maybe we can, maybe the sort of should be interested in switching over completely, but he's going to come tomorrow to a presentation on that with myself and Johanna and to come over the upstairs. And groundwater protection is another overlay I'm trying to get from Lakes Regional Planning because then get the groundwater protection district. So then, you know, there's a lot of possibilities now that we have that GIS. If we have layers, it's not very costly once you have the digitized maps to do that. So. Are there any other questions for Leanne? John. Um, I know it's white lot. They, they got, looks like they got the solar panels in. They did. Um, I mean, notice they haven't put in the power by any use of trees that they agreed to. Yeah, I was over there today too. I noticed that when I was over there, they weren't finished putting in the solar panel, so I was going to wait. So if they're done, I'll take them right over. I'll take them right over and see see where they're at. They're done anything? I I wouldn't know. I, I think you know the panels are up, but I don't know what it takes to install the burgers and wires. Yeah, definitely before the winter we'll make sure because we like to get those in the so they get established. Probably so by right. August we'll take another right out there. They're not there on, on contact like that. Um, the other thing, and, and just to be able to start thinking about, you know, think about this for years, uh, the solar farms, what can we do? This is great help for um, people concerned about solar farms, at least the property and, and doing that. It's not an easy task for you. It's, it's huge, but there's, Maybe we need to go and survey people in town and ask what they think of solar farms or what, but some type of regulation on solar farms and probably windmills too. Yeah, we can we can look at um, doing you know looking at it and doing an ordinance on that and we can do amendments at the end of the year. There are a few other ideas about amendments, obviously signs. Roosters are another one I'd like a, an ordinance about because we get calls on that. We have an ordinance on that. Roosters, yeah. So, uh, and and solar farms and, and when, yeah, I think the key thing is I mentioned to you that I noticed some of the stores we, we had regularly our trash problems. Burger King has been one of the frequent flyers where they take all their trash cans in because they don't want to empty them. And uh, so we had created an ordinance to, yeah, I think it was based on parking spaces, probably 20 spaces, they had to have one barrel. I mentioned it to the manager for the first there to be in charge. And they said, well, they were not going to prepare. They've taken them all in. Uh, I've noticed at least on 140 as well as my friend here, where I go up every morning. Go. I'm not familiar with the ordinance for trash cans for parking space, but I'll take another look. I did. I didn't find that. I did see the trash ordinance that we have, um, which is really more directed at the trash pickup, and it does say the enforcer of that is the police department and the health officer. And I did um, give the message to Catherine about it. About Burger King, and she was going to take a ride down there. Yeah, right. And it was for every place that serves takeout food has to have a certain one trash can for 20 states. I'll take another look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. for all that. Thank you, very difficult situations that you have to deal with on a regular basis. I'm just about out of time. I think I just have a couple last things that we're going to be doing. Um, I will be coming back to the board too. Um, maybe next time I want, I want to do a few uh, editorial changes on the fee schedule for the building. So just be aware of coming 
for that. And, uh, and, the, and those are the ordinances. Yeah, sign ordinance, solar, and roosters. I'm looking at um, getting some, uh, some changes on that. So that's it. Okay. Eric? I just have a quick question. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the trash can ordinance either, but um, most restaurants are takeout right now, so you're going to find litter everywhere. I've noticed an increase. I drive an hour. I notice near every restaurant or place there's more litter because people are. So it's not necessarily in the parking lots. It's that people are done eating. And the easiest thing for them to do is dispose of it outside cars. Right? Um, just a quick question. The, the reduction in, in revenues and uh, building, it, could some of that be related to um, I can't think of the name the development up on School Street, the cluster development. Rolling Hills. Rolling Hills is, is a lot of that. Some of that attributed to that where they built good number, you know, maybe half of them already. Yeah, well, they're still, I mean, they're still moving along with those. Yeah. Um, I think it was just a slowdown a little bit during during COVID. Um, and, you know, I don't have enough history in town to know what, what the cycle is here. Well, I just know how many permits they've issued and what that revenue was because I've most of been I would imagine been issued 2019 early 2020. Correct. So yeah. Okay. That's all. Okay. Thank you ever so much for coming by. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Next up is uh Mr. Pierce. We had a little bit of a mix up. Um, Tim did the analysis for the DPW, and that is probably yes. something we really need to talk about yeah. non public. So, okay, so we want to wait till the non public. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the next uh, up would be. Uh, the Slackman's reports, and first up on that list is Eric Byron. Um, I don't have much, but I, I noticed there was an email that went out about the, the flags on the telephone poles, and I kind of drew along, and I think they're okay for the height because, especially over here along the river, if you lower those flag pole, those flag poles, the trucks. 18 wheelers that go by with high trailers are going to catch those. Um, but based on the flag I returned this evening, I believe that the, the screws used to hold them in, into the telephone pole were inappropriate. And Kevin had figured that out, and he's as he's able to, he's replacing yeah. the long screws. That was my only observation about yeah. that. So, um, and we got one back. Yeah. So. I don't know how many more are missing or anything like that, but other than that, I have nothing. So I'll okay. pass my time. Thank you very much. Uh, John, you're the next up on the selectman's reports if you want to go now. Sure. All righty. Not too much going on. Uh, I, I know it's a lot of business and so uh, requiring the masks. About the uh, island and what's going on over there. I think it's just inherent to society in general on the whole streets and so have to wear masks. And, uh, I did briefly talk to uh, Deputy Chief Tim, Tim Schubert this evening, and uh, we are looking at the end of our snap. There's two houses. One was the OBK post three, and the other is one directly behind it. And they're looking to do a, uh, a training burn. Like they'll be coming before us in a couple of weeks, just ironing everything out. They've gone through the whole neighborhood and they're talking to each person and, uh, and doing that. And uh, they're also, before they even bring it to us, uh, they're having the whole building checked for asbestos and all that but apparently at this point it's very well received in parts 
He subsequently passed away on Tuesday, I believe. Very sad. It's, it's a difficult thing to enforce. It's a, uh, almost a great passage for That's it. Okay, John. Uh, Pat, you're up. I would just like to thank um, Kevin for a very speedy help with an elderly in air conditioning. Um, just standing in the air conditioned in the 98 degree weather the other day, fail, and he went right out there and rectified the situation. So thank you, Kevin. That's all I have. Okay, uh, Peter. Hawkers and peddlers licenses. We've got multiple people around town. Food wagons with no hawkers and peddlers, to my knowledge. One that sets up down in Krusty's, uh, down the foot of the hill. There's another one just up the road at Fonzie's Antiques. To my knowledge, um, we have Chick-fil-A in process and the one that does the food truck at Home Depot is the only one that's done the permit. Be nice, maybe, if the police would uh, do a little enforcement. I agree. Uh, Chief, are you on the line? Okay. I am. I did. I did get the message. I'll uh, put that out to the to the officers to um, check those and and make sure they have their permits with them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Jeannie. You're welcome. Yes, when I came through the other day to check on the sign, it did go past a vendor at a Paco stand. We went to Fonzie, and I did ask you when I got to the office, because that's the only one I saw, if we had a permit. She said, yes, I'll you the list. I'll have to check the list. It's the only one I've seen on the list was the one at Home Depot. Well, if he's got one, I'm sure when asked to produce it, he'll be glad to do so. Peter? I, I just had, I wondered because I was actually at Home Depot a couple hours ago and I did not notice the cart there as I had. So I wonder if it's maybe the same guy, but maybe he doesn't, does he still need to get another one? I, I don't know because I, I have, I've only seen the one down by Rusty's. So I just didn't know if maybe it was the same guy. The same guy that was down by Rusty's. Eric, yeah. did you look by the Mitsubishi uh, trailer that has the uh, heating system? Because yeah. that's where he parks. Yeah, he parks right there, and it's kind of in the middle. So I, I didn't notice it. I, you know, I, I was looking for it, but I was distracted at the same time. So I could have missed it. But the other one is the the one that's down by Rusty's tends to be the WTF one, and because he's on Facebook a lot. And you know he does there. His trailer is currently in front of the boarding house up here on Main Street. So that's where I believe he lives. Unusual because he's gotten uh, office pedals in the past. Yes, it's been very good. Yeah. And I've never that. seen Dan over by Rusty. So there's another guy, young guy, that was there for a while, and then went up to Fonzie's. Um, and I haven't seen him out there for a while, but I'm guessing it's, you know, sporadic or he moves it around or I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, Peter, you got something else? That's a okay. Next is me. Uh, can we move that clock so that I can see it? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just turn the table around. <laughs> yeah. We're ahead of schedule. We are ahead of yeah, good. Uh, I too would like to uh, speak to the death at the trestle. 
Uh, 50 years ago, I was jumping off that trestle. Uh, I've never known anybody to die there before, although it's a dangerous thing. It's got a, quite an undertow there. And for somebody who might not be a strong swimmer or uh, might be really tired because they've been swimming and in the water for a long time, it's very dangerous. Um, I talked with the chief of police because I went over there. It's right around the corner from my house. And we have no parking signs there, but the no parking signs are way faded. Uh, and I asked the chief about replacing the signs and stepping up enforcement, which doesn't keep people off the trestle necessarily. But if we do nothing, that doesn't seem like the right thing either. Um, do we own the trestle? No, the state owns that, or the Bureau of, of Railroad. Bureau of Railroads. Yeah, the we, railroad we people own the trestle. The land beside that the trestle sits on and all that that goes all the way up River Road is owned by the state. Some of it is leased out to various land or people that are contiguous uh, to the property. Um, but to my knowledge, that piece has never been available. So that's state property. Can we maybe have, ask the chief to contact the state and see if we can get signage up there, say no swimming, no jumping, or whatever? Uh, that was part of what we discussed. And he was going to be in touch with the, uh, the uh, Department of Transportation and the Rail Bureau. There's going to be a meeting next week of uh, several agencies that are involved in this and the chief was invited to chief didn't cause it but the chief is is an invitee and uh, uh as soon as he gets the time and date of this meeting uh we'll all get an invitation to be there and ask questions or um, add input if we do so desire can you easily walk on to the trust okay is this something that we should work with in conjunction with the town of Belmont? Because the other side of that trestle is the town of Belmont. Um, again, at this point, it's just preliminary. The people, the the people who would, would be involved in that from Belmont are supposed to be invited to that meeting as well. Uh, so I don't see any way of stopping people from doing. It. We can put up signs. Uh, we can restrict the parking, but there are other places to park that are totally legal. Um, and aside from putting up danger, warning and danger signs, and maybe the maybe the rail bureau will say uh, put up a sign that says absolutely no jumping. But how do you how do you uh, enforce that? Concertina wire. There you go. But that the hobo railroad won't be able to. No, you run it so they can't jump. They have to jump through it. Well, I'll bring that up if you're not there. Uh, in any case, I'm terribly saddened by this young man's death and, and uh, my condolences go out to his family. Uh, island concerts, uh, we've had two of them now and uh, the last one was even uh, more well attended than the first one. Um, that said, uh, I don't know for a fact because I didn't, 120, 132, including myself and Emily, and we're on the island that day, the first time. I perceive that we had a larger crowd last week, but I don't know what that number is. However, I do also perceive that perhaps we're reaching maximum capacity. Um, they were distancing and, and uh, they all came onto the island wearing a mask, except for one individual, who felt that uh, they had a right, because this is America, to flaunt the uh, mask requirement. Uh, Allison Hartwell informed them that it was a prerequisite for coming onto the island. And uh, Officer Paulus uh, came and talked with the individual. And I don't know what they were talking about, because I, I was over on the other side of the island at the food. 
but he talked him right off the island. So it was no longer a problem. Um, I just, I, I implore you, please wear a mask when you come to this, the concert. And I'm gonna get those attendance numbers and talk to Allison about uh, potential social distancing problems because I don't want, to, and neither does Allison. She does not want this to be a, a problem, heaven forbid, that's not her intention at all. Uh, I'm wondering about the porta pot that uh, was supposed to be placed beside the road, and I'm wondering if uh, you had any information, Jeannie. Last, the last time that I talked with Catherine, we ordered the first porta potty, it's been trying to track down the second porta potty. Uh, informed me that they're having a real problem finding the second one because there's a real shortage. So uh, we may not see a second one. No public restrooms around, so everyone's yeah. putting those up. Yeah, yeah. There's I'm, a real issue with this one because it fills up. I bet it does. Uh, I don't know if we can get a uh, yeah. an extra pickup or clean out or whatever. I'm not sure what arrangements were made, but. I noticed that uh, it was pretty, pretty full when I was there. You couldn't get there to in a wheelchair, though. So. Um, well, that's the next thing on my list. Uh, the parking in front of, and leading over to the porta potties, uh, pointed out by Peter last week, um, we put up cones and tried to keep the, the uh, lane open, um, there was a, a vehicle up near the, the, the porta potty, although I think you could have still got a wheelchair in there. Um, I spoke with Officer Paulus, who's the regular officer at the concert, and mentioned that to him. They had red cones out, um, and he was going to do better at enforcing the parking restrictions in that area because if it doesn't do any good to have a handicapped restroom if a handicapped person can't access it. Uh, we used takeout containers this week. I'm no longer serving on the paper plates. Um, I have no specific instructions uh, that I can't use paper plates per se. However, I have access to the to-go containers. And uh, a couple of people asked for plates and I gave them to them, but most people were fine with it. It's like, no problem. Uh, the trash really built up. <laughs> I'll tell you, I might have to stomp it down in the middle next time because I could barely get the bag shut at the, at the end. Uh, and Town Hall remains closed to the public at this time. It is available by appointment. Uh, you make an appointment with the various departments and you can make arrangements to, to be seen. Uh, we're waiting still for the ULV sprayer and it's expected to arrive uh, the end of this week, Friday, uh, or the beginning of next week. Um, so at that time, uh, we can, once we get it and get it in use, we can have another discussion about potentially opening town hall or opening the meetings uh, of the planning board and what have you. Uh, we'll see what happens then. Uh, and I, I know that we're coming up on a potential eviction, eviction situation. Uh, rents have, have been uh, held off, but the rent didn't go away, just the payments. Uh, so the rent has been accruing and landlords are in the same crunch as everybody else. So I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but it seems like it's coming. If you have need for services, please call 211 and somebody will direct you to the people that you need to talk to to help you with what your issue is. Um, that takes care of me. Uh, is there any questions from the public? Mr. Chairman, I did have one more statement I needed to make. Eric? Um, 
that was should have been on top of my report and I forgot to say. Eric, maybe we need to take an ask off. Yeah, how about that? Is that better? All right. Um, recently, a town employee passed away and there was a community memorial service held for this employee on Sunday afternoon in the town of Northfield. And I'm going to say I was very disappointed that, that didn't, I was the only selectman that I saw there. I did not see any other selectman there. It was a very, for me, it was a very moving service. It was well attended by residents, friends, family, other police departments. There were police departments there from uh, Newcastle, uh, Badbury, Marine Patrol, there were, uh, six or seven different police departments. I, I, I feel a little disappointed and I understand that people have other things going on, but. Uh, this was an employee of our town. Disappointed with that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. Peter? I find it interesting, Eric. We walked right past each other. I got there late because I had thought it was starting an hour later than it did. I was there. You can ask the chief because I talked to him for quite a while. Um, so be careful with your statement, please. Pat? I appreciate both of you representing the Board of Slotman because some of us were quarantined. So I would have been there if I could have been there. So if we have to say that out, out bring that out in public now uh, so that the public now hears that I was quarantined for that amount of time. I would have been there at Dr. Kemp's memorial. Please watch what you say in public. I was on the island cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. I did not know. And I never really knew until after it was actually over. I never okay. received anything that said. Oh, I don't. Well, uh, my heart goes out to Officer Keck in any case. And my good. failure to attend in no way implies that I didn't care about him or his family. Be that as it may. Is there anybody else that has any statements? Are there any questions from the public out there? Well, one of them is the chief. Is there any questions from the public? Okay. Um, Kevin LaChapelle, are you on? I am on. Can you hear me? Yes, and the floor is yours. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening to the public and to the uh, Board of Selectmen. Um, I've been asked to call in this evening uh, in reference to the police station project. Uh, first off, I'd like to uh, apologize for kind of springing this on you last moment. Um, it was actually the question was posed to me back at the end of June um, by uh, David Baer of Milestone Construction asking if we would be interested in a uh, cornerstone for the new police station building. And uh, obviously that was an oversight on the committee during the process, but I think it's a wonderful idea if you walk around our community, whether it be town hall or the Tilton School uh, historical buildings, they all have a cornerstone with the year that's embossed uh, in granite in those buildings. And I, I think it would be a great addition to our police station building. Um, so uh, we're on a time crunch because they are moving right along on the police station building and they they have the blocks up and they're getting ready to do the brick veneer so uh they've done uh, we've done some work this week on pricing and design and i believe that you have uh, you should have uh two pictures renderings from gary goudreau uh, in your possession uh as to the placement of the granite um and so my question to the Board of Selectmen tonight is asking you uh, to approve um, a cornerstone and however you wish, if you do approve it, uh, whichever design or the rendering that you choose. I, I particularly like the one that's near the front door. Uh, what we would, what I propose is that we leave it as blank granite for now until we can decide what we would like on it. Um, I have not uh, brought this idea to our committee to this point. Um, this is the decision really comes down to um, the board of selectmen whether you say yes or no, and then however you choose to figure out what we want to put on that. 
whether we want to just leave it 2020 or if we want it to say 2020 and uh, for the people, by the people, or something like that. The cost of that uh, cornerstone, uh, just to put the piece of blank granite in there, is about $325. Um, I personally would like to uh, pay for that uh, as we start um, as as a gift. And then, um, however, uh, we choose whether the committee splits up um, the etching at a later date. Um, that's fine with me. I'm obviously very loose with this whole thing, uh, but we do need to decide whether or not, yes, we do want a cornerstone or not, uh, because the Masons are moving at that pace. So, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, however you'd like to move forward. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, John Scanlon, what are your thoughts on this? I completely overlooked that uh, tradition, and I think it's great. Um, Typically, I've seen them as cornerstones, so, you know, I respect, you, you like it by the front door, but to me, it seems like it should be on the corner, traditional on the corner, but I think it's okay, Peter. What a hope our professional architect would have included that in the design since all the big buildings have it, so. Okay, well, is that a yes or a no? I guess. Yes, yeah, like another. Uh, Are you the doorway or the corner? I don't care where. I've seen them on both. It doesn't matter. By the entrance where people go, probably makes more sense. Eric? I like it by the doorway. Pat? I like it either way. Okay, so we have a corner, we have two either ways, and we have a doorway. So no matter how I vote, it's still up in the air. I mean, yeah, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, a piece of granite on the building. I'm a corner guy. Let's go with cornerstone on the corner. Okay. I like it. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. That's really It awesome. really is a generous thing. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, you're very welcome. And we'll figure out the rest of it uh, as we get moving uh, through this. Uh, I'll probably ask to speak to you again, and we'll have a proposal uh, in front of you at one of your future meetings uh, for exactly um, what we'd like it to say. Um, I, my request to you tonight is just be thinking about um, what you would want on that. So whether you want to, how, however you want to do it, I will, I'll reach out to you through Jeannie uh, at a later date. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thank you very much. You're very, Enjoy. Yeah, you're very welcome. Have a great night. Thank you, Kevin. Where is he in thank Idaho? You. Yeah. Well, I'm, in, I'm in I'm in Yakima, Washington State right now. I love Yakima. I heard it's nice this yeah. time. Yeah, oh, yeah, it it's is. beautiful. Oh. I absolutely thank you guys. All right, thank you, Kevin. Okay. Uh, well, the time being 6:03. I would like to make a motion to move into non-public. For RSA 91-A, semicolon 3, paragraph 2A, dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him. Just I, the one. Oh, not the second one? Yeah. Okay. Find that highly unusual. Uh, okay. And uh, is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Constantino, yes. I uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. I yes. 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 We now stand in non-public session. We uh, expect to be back. Hold on a minute. Put his hand up. Okay. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We expect to be back. Uh, it says 7.30 on my cheat sheet, but I'm hoping 7 o'clock. And uh, we stand in not public. I'll sit. I'll sit. He said we stand in the public. I said I'll sit. Or sit. <laughs> I think I'll sit. Are you are we off, Tim?
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome back. The time being 750, uh, make a motion to come out of non-public session. Roll call, uh, is there a second? Second, Tyler. Uh, is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. Fire, yes. Scanlon, yes. I would make a motion to seal the minutes of the non public meeting of July 16, 2020, because the reasons justifying the need for the non public session still remain. Fire, seven. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Constantine, yes. Uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. Pyra, yes. Scanlon, yes. All right. The motion passes. Uh, at this point in the proceedings, Jeannie Forrester, Town Administrator's Report. Um, actually, I, I thought maybe the chief could tell you about his. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Well, you're already sitting there. Thank you. So, yeah, I just wanted to update the board um, back. Uh, a couple months ago, I found out that there's a, a company that helps public safety, police, and fire get furniture. They they go around New England and liquidate companies that are just up and moving, I guess. And I think they it's a business where they sell it, but they're very uh, fond of helping safety. They've done some fire departments. I know I think they did Richfield Fire. They've done some stuff on the second last time. And these companies down in, mostly it seems like they're in mass. When they uh, move, they just leave all the furniture and it gets liquidated. So um, I found out that uh, recently that they, they're they going to do a company next week. I sent uh, Jeannie a copy of what they are about to get next week from this, this company down in Bedford um, called iRacing. And he said he'd have to know there Tuesday. And so some of the logistic pieces are easy because they deliver it. And hallelujah, they do. Um, but on my end, I just have to find a place to store it. So I forwarded it to Jeannie. I think she forwarded it to the board. There's no cost to it. It's more just storing it until the new station's open. And um, from the photos, it looks like it's in great shape. I talked to a couple of chiefs that have gotten some of their furniture before, and they always say that it's like two or three years old. It's usually in really, really good shape. Um, he said that we could look at it on Monday, but they have to put out on Tuesday. So I've already started to, just in case, I think they could go ahead and move on it and have some storage options. Because, um, you know, they would literally be delivering it after on Tuesday and Wednesday. So there's a lot of great furniture there. I um, I think it would save us a lot of money moving to the station. And um, if there are some things that aren't on this, these sheets that uh, we don't get, there's other competencies that we're doing between now and the next year. So I like guess if it was a certain type of desk that isn't here, you could tell them, hey, at the end of the year, could you keep these up? These things? And you will. This is just the first round of furniture that he's kind of offered. But it doesn't mean it necessarily. And this is a donation, correct? It's a, yeah, it's a full donation. You know, and I could I could um get you know put Jeannie in touch with him. his name's Mike Norton. He's a runs a company. It's kind of together. Do we need to uh, make a motion to accept this as a donation? I know that. We can do that this evening, correct? Mm. Okay. Next Thursday. Yeah, I'm sorry it's time sensitive. It, it just popped up. I've been trading emails with them for a couple of months and it was kind of crickets with everything going on. Obviously, they wouldn't let him go in a company. His workers couldn't be in all the same reasons. Chief, what about some place like JGL or like 
foster connection in the new building that they need. That's, yeah, I was going to reach out to some of the businesses that have some empty space right now. And I, some popped in my head actually when I was waiting to them. So, you know, make some calls. Because I think that might even think we could put the boxes easily. So I'm looking for some more space. It's been a yeah, it, exactly. Sea lighter, one of those, I don't know, the yeah, aggregate at least one to you know what I mean? Yeah, so. John? So, I don't know if we need a motion for him to allow the chief to go ahead and assess our needs and uh, our whatever furniture that is available. Back the numbers for our Fine storage. Temporary storage. So that motion will be made next week. It has to be it has to be on the agenda, I think. But to accept it will be next week. We have to be on the agenda to accept it. We'll give you permission to proceed to uh, assess the needs. Okay. Make arrangements for our storage right. Objections? Hearing none, go forward. Thank you. Well no, thank you. It's a great, great score. Yeah. Tim really wants that to rack. He doesn't look off do. tiny behind I the door. <laughs> 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 I spotted it, so that's it. We need to switch over. Yeah. Yeah, All right, thank you. So I'm going to be really quick. You got my report. Um, just a couple um, action items first. Uh, Sheena Duncan has volunteered to draw out the mural. I did uh, speak with her about, I did hear some concerns from the board about the back end of puppy dogs. Uh, and what we decided was we change it a little bit so that, you know, the face of the siphon pump wall that faces the road, then it has the, uh, the uh, oh. flower box goes into it, then we're going to put them over there. So you'll see it behind the uh, day lips, right? And then the, the, the bones would be flying over in the dirt over towards where you can really see and there'll be a fence and some flowers. So she's agreed to draw that up and I thought that was really great. Um, and then we have some volunteers, myself, Lee, and some others who are actually going to do the painting once that's in place. Um, I did want to ask the board if they would consider uh, giving her a small stipend for doing the work. She didn't ask for anything. We do have some funds left in the 150th committee. Uh, and I think that's probably a couple thousand or something like that. So I was thinking if you, we offered her, again, she's not expecting anything. I just thought it'd be a nice gesture, uh, a couple hundred bucks. So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there uh, any discussion? Hearing yes, none. Yes. Uh, yeah. Jessamine, yes. Priority, yes. Cameron, yes. Thank you. The goal is to have that done before the end of the before fall, actually. So it will be well. The second item is the ULB sprayer. You heard Joe mention earlier, it's either going to be here tomorrow or Monday of next week. Uh, my notes last name, there was a discussion about having a policy and procedure in place for the use of this unit. And my question is, is that something the board wants to put together? Do you want to provide any guidance? Is that something you want us to put together? Do you want a policy and procedure? We didn't vote on it, but I heard about it. We discussed it, so I just want to check. Peter? Yeah, Peter's the leader. Do we uh, need a policy on how to operate 
vacuum cleaners too. It's like, I think it's getting down to the ridiculous on some of these. Personally, I think uh, we should have a policy of timeliness, not how you operate the spray sprayer or whatever, but uh, if we have a um, budget meeting up here, then first thing in the morning, somebody would come in and spray or whatever, you know? I think it would be important that we have an SDS for that, as we perform, and that we follow the safety guidelines on that, that's sufficient. Anybody else? So in your just, spare time, just win. <laughs> yeah. Just the win. In, in your pretty much the win. In your spare time, if you okay. could put that together. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Sure. So uh, Tim alluded to it. I don't know if you read it in the FYI. I, I do want to point it out. We found out uh, yesterday <laughs> that they have expanded what they consider eligible for expenses and our public safety and health officer payroll and associated expenses will be covered. And I, I read it, Tim read it, I sent an email to Gopher just to make sure. So all our public safety, our, our um, police officers, their entire payroll now until October, Actually, and I think maybe even when this started, uh, to October 15th, that payroll will be reimbursed. All of this? All of it. No. I know. What you talking about, Willis? What's that? What are you talking about, Willis? That's, that's yeah, no. remarkable. And, and the health and the health officers. Nice. Health. Nice. Health. Um, what about expenses? And I'm not just trying to keep on. I, for my information, uh, things like uh, Tim's wages for being so, here tonight. Right, and so I I did ask that question myself. Uh, I sent an email and said, well, what about our IT guy? Uh, because he's attended all these extra meetings and the response I got back was that would be covered as well. Yes, that was my impression from your, your communication, but uh, I just wanted to make Positive, sure. John? What? <laughs> it's a public safety yeah, issue. It's public safety. Push it in a little, maybe. That's funny. You're on that job. It's actually it's nice right now. Until, until next spring. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the health officer is doing, they could be investigating uh, bed, bugs. bed bugs somewhere and it could be covered under COVID. That's what I understand. Tim, Tim could be sitting in his office at midnight playing solitaire. No, and it's covered no, by... of course not. Like he does. Well, no, and you should be going home. <laughs> no, but just, I mean, it doesn't matter. His salary, no matter what he's doing, well, and that's what it I doesn't said. have to be COVID related. That, no, it does. Uh, and, and, and that's what I said. He's, he's, uh, let's see the email what I hours. said. He's a salaried personnel. Um, and he, um, but he has put in time that uh, that is above and beyond that he would not normally have done because all these meetings he's attended. Right. So even though he is on salary, they said it's still is it based on a percentage of his time dedicated to COVID. Well, and I, I asked. So I asked. Uh, here's the email. I said. I said, you know, I sent with COVID-19, all our boards, uh, committees and commissions have been meeting virtually, necessitating our IT director to attend and manage each meeting, which is outside his normal scope of work for the town. He is salaried, but the hours have been quite significant. Would this be an allowable expense? If so, is there a recommended calculation? And they said, Jeannie is outlined in the attached tre treasury of accused, page one, third question answer. The IT director's job responsibilities have been diverted to substantially different use as a result of the public health emergency than we can reimburse for the IT, IT director's payroll. 
Also, the IT director's job is determined to be substantially dedicated to the public health emergency. We can reimburse. We view substantially dedicated as spending greater than 50% of the individual's time related to the public health emergency. So what we're going to do is we're going to submit all our expenses, both for the health officer, for the police department, or for the IT director, and see what they're going to spend. Can you submit, and this isn't a joke, I'm just asking this, can you submit the selectman stipends because we're health officers and we devoted all of our time to this COVID thing in the last couple of months? I don't know about Sounds that. Sounds sketchy. Yeah, the, uh, the other, <laughs> how many times have we been on? You were talking about COVID. The other um, one that I'm going to follow up with is the town clerk, the deputy town clerk, because they have been exposed to the public since we opened back up and to see if their salaries will. I, th I think what's happening is, you know, we've got, and you've heard this from the very beginning, we've got $86,000 dedicated to us, the town itself, and I think they're trying to help us get there. Got because it. so far our expenses have been about five thousand. Uh, well, right now we were reimbursed the fifty-seven hundred. This is seven hundred, and we collected another uh, about thirty-five hundred that we're planning to submit. But with what this new guidance is, uh, we'll have no difficulty reaching the maximum amount that uh, was allocated for the town until eighty-six thousand. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is, in case you were curious, I asked Joyce Fulweiler if she would be the prime sponsor on the legislation to move the boundary line since she's in Northfield. She has a great familiarity with this topic. And if you didn't know, uh, Juliet Harvey is running unopposed for state rep. Uh, so it's pretty much should be the next state rep and asked her to be a co-sponsor. Well, good for her. I don't understand that, Jeannie. Not, I don't understand why you say it's tilt the same because the state rep is tilting in Sampton. Right. Well, I, I'm sorry, maybe tilt in Sampton. So there are only two on the ballot. Um, it's Tim Lang. And Julia. So Dennis is not on the ballot. Yeah, Dennis is not on the ballot, and there's no one on the Democratic side. It's just Julia, right? Tim, right? Tim. Yeah, Julia. Okay, I did not know that. I didn't either, Charlie. The ballot yesterday. Well, there, was a, there was actually a letter to the editor to Daily Sun, I think, yesterday, the day before, and they listed a bunch of people that were not running together. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I saw that. I hope Dennis is okay. I think he's just, he's done his time. He's tired of it. Yeah, he's done a lot of years. Five years. So. Um, I wanted to ask you to consider not having meeting next week because Tim is taking time off, which he needs, and he will not be here to do the technology. And I am concerned about my trying to handle technology and run the meeting. I'll run the meeting. So. And there is nothing that has to happen next week. And then the following week, we would uh, go over the job or the you know, performance evaluations. And Tim Juber will be here on the 6th. So, are there objections? Can we just do only the evaluations? Because that takes a couple of minutes. I mean, well, so what you're looking at, you've already done the police department. That's already. Done. So it's going to be land use and Kevin and DPW and uh, Town Hall. Town. Is that a right. meeting or a work session? It's always been a meeting in the past. Non public, right? Yes. It's non public work session. But, but I, doesn't I, I know that Tim wants to get. Front of you, so that should take more than five minutes just deciding, but that could be the whole thing, yes. Other than to vote on accepting the furniture, I'm all for it because I've spent some time with the family. That would be great. Objections? My only concern is real quick. Uh, once we got that machine, we were real quick. That's a good question. I so I anticipate, let's say, it comes in 
So it comes in tomorrow. I would I would propose that uh, town hall open up August first. The first Monday is August third. August third Monday. And you have your second August sixth. Well, there's a there's a fire commission meeting on August fourth. If they if they if the people tonight over town, I mean that assumes, and maybe that's when you say assuming that the that even if it comes, but it's right. been right. told us coming for weeks. If it doesn't, well, they can meet at the Grange. No. Well, they call they call the specific set of shift. So. Okay, then we need a motion to. Uh, Open town hall to the public as of Monday, August 3rd. Contingent upon the ULB coming. Contingent upon the ULB coming. That is working properly. Well, yes. Just for clarification, there still will be social, social distancing. And masks <laughs> and, and everything, that, and just the way it is now, with the exception of wouldn't have to necessarily make an appointment to come into town hall Correct. to see somebody. Correct. That would be the difference. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Do we have the solution already, Jenny? Yes. So you can get your SDS. Yeah. Should be in the box, I would think. Yes. Uh, anything? Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Roll call vote. Constantino. Yes. Uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. Fiber, yes. Yeah, okay, the motion passes. Motion to skip this meeting, this Thursday's meeting, and meet on next. Um, I don't, okay, second. Is there any discussion? We're going to skip the meeting and then have the meeting the following week. And that's going to be the work session, August 6th. For evaluations, except Tim Joubert. I'm curious, how do you define a work session? What's the concept? It's a meeting, and it's we're going to non-public. To to I've never known it to not be a meeting. I've never known it to be a work session. I've been here ten years. See, I'm maybe I'm just out in the dark. Yeah, but well, maybe. It's just it's a non-public session. I've done work sessions before it's, you don't make decisions, it's just a work session. So that's how I define the difference. I, I would think it's still well, a select decision. I know, so I would I think it's still a select meeting, but it's not public. Session. I'd like to do it at the selectman's meeting on that date. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. Fire, yes. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Do you have anything else? I have a question for you. Uh, is it proper for me to announce the motion made in non-public or does it have to be made again? I think you should probably, gosh, it's been so long. I, I would just make the motion to go open that in public. Okay. So, all right, I'll make a motion to, yeah, make your motion again. So I'm going to remake the motion that we hire a full-time public works labor, labor, the 1715 now. Is there a second? I have a second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Constantino? Yes. Uh, no. Jessamine, yes. Fiber, yes. Cameron, yes. Okay. Uh, Tim, I have one final question for you. What is the amount in the contingency line that's made up of the 
merit line? 16,000 and what? 16 and 17. I'd have to look at my report from uh, last week. It's uh, 16,000 and change. Yeah, I don't have the exact There's number here. In the minutes. That has from the minutes. We have a what? Okay, well, let me see if I can get 16,532. Yeah. I make a motion to move $16,532 out of the uh, contingency line and put it back into the merit line. Why? Second, okay. Constantino. Why? That we voted no last week. Yeah, we did. And I just brought it up again. All right, and why is because just because we're moving sixteen thousand five hundred dollars to the merit line doesn't mean we're going to spend sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. Right. I think it sends a poor message to the employees that uh, even though our tax receipts are year to date on schedule ish, uh, we've precluded them from having a. The, a potential merit raise. Police department gets their raise. No, they don't. They have a contract. No, they don't. They don't have a contract. They're not operating under a contract. The contract from last year still applies, does yeah, it not? No raise, no movement. Okay. Nonetheless, I still, although that was part of my reasoning, um, and and that's not to say that any employee, particular employee, might get a merit raise, but I think it sends a good message to the employees, and that's why. We don't have to spend it. We don't, we don't have to spend it. John? I think it's a great idea that we, we do several merit races and do that, but I think it'd be better to go and go through all the merit races and then move down. Okay. Eric? I like the yeah. We could move what we don't use back. Could work that way as well. <laughs> Which is more work for you think? Yeah, really. <laughs> How many mouse clips? We yeah. usually go in the advice of the finance directors. That's what I'm going with. And we had that last week. I wanted time to think about it. So I voted no last week. I thought about it. here I am today. Peter? Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen the second half. Uh, in the past, if we've done it, we can go retro to find out whatever date you want. I think we're still jumping the gun. Anyone else? We don't have to spend it. We're just moving it to the line. Am I right? Yeah. That's okay. correct. So if we're not sure we're going to spend it, we don't even need to move it to the line because we're not sure we're going to spend it. Point well taken. Is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion? Yeah. What's the finance director? Isn't it going real with this? <laughs> we're all looking at each other. It's a little dicey. Either way, it looks like we are going to try and make something available. But we do it now or later, please, please get some type of paraphrase. Going to try. So let's see. Is, there, the next is there any other discussion? Hearing not. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Constantino. Yes. Bob, no. Jessamine, yes. Fiber, no. Scamble, no. Okay, motion fails. Uh, is there any other? I have one. Oh, yes. So in the hawkers and meddlers, um, there is, um, in the package, they require a notary, a signed notarized paper saying that the, the landlord or the owner of the property allows you to um, set up on set their up property. On their property. Yeah. Okay, in the case of the Chick-fil-A, 
we have a an agreement, a lease agreement from Tang that should satisfy our need for the permission for the um, uh, lease agreement saying that they're they're giving them permission to set up on their land. Okay. But what's holding the package up is a notarized letter from Eric saying that they give permission from on that. So I'm asked the board in that exception that in cases like Tanger, and there may be a, another business or two that have come up in that area that we give um, Gail and Jean the leeway to say, if it's a lease agreement, that should satisfy the board of selectmen to say it's a lease agreement to that property and it is giving them permission to be there on that land because that's the intent. I have a question with regard to that. Um, mm -hmm. Does that mean that anybody uh, like the hot dog carts and whatever have to have a notarized? Yes. Really? Yes, they do. It's part of the part of the office that was packaged. But in this case, you're requiring twice. You, they have a lease and they want a notary, and it, it's kind of redundant. Well, that would be redundant. Right. Um, is it? Is that a unfair? Well, it's not unfair. It's just you have to jump jump through hoops because they got to come up and get a letter from Eric and then go to notary and get it notarized when they've already got the lease agreement. Okay. That's Peter? Is the Hawkers and Peddlers application form a state form or a town generated? Town generated. So why don't we on the form say and or, so either the uh, lease agreement and or the uh, other notarized one? I think that would be even better way. Yeah, me too. Um, because if you have a lease, you've got an agreement with the property owner. Yeah. Are they, are they all set in every other aspect of the information? Well, I, I think so. Other, so. Somebody just asked the question, was that a town? Uh, well, the, the, there is a state form. I've seen it. Well, they, they have to, there's requirements by the state according to our form, but Catherine is the one that, that put together the form. So I know it's a town form. Okay. okay. So what was the question? We just, we just amend this to uh, the, uh, the yeah, not Catherine. A lease agreement sure. or the uh, sure. notarized. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is our. I, I found our application. Yes, I percent. Well, big speed. So yes, we could do so that. we could change yeah. it that. So and that would satisfy yeah. the. It, the companies that have yeah. a lease agreement. Okay, good. Yeah. Joe, I'll Peter? make a motion. We amend our hawkers and peddlers form to change the line for a notarized signature to add or a lease agreement from the property owner. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing not. Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Five, yes. Jessamyn, yes. Pyre, yes. Gentlemen, yes. Okay. Is there any other business to come yes. before the board of select? Yes. Keep it on. Adjourn. Second, five. Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Five, yes. Oh, yes. Pyre, yes. Yes. Thank you all very much.